Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here in TNO, the last days of Europe, in which we are going to explore the autonomous Soviet Liberation Army. Poland has been lost once more, first to the Holy Russian Empire, which, you know, killed thousands of Poles, and then the Kazakh Purification Army, which has occupied the region with brutality comparable to the Stromoviki in the last day of Daddy Tabby's reign. In the face of this adversity, however, Nova Polska, and the spirit of Poland itself lives on in General Ryzard Kuklinski, a former officer of Nova Polska turned partisan when Tabby's forces came to Kazakhstan. Seizing lands north of the Kazakh Purification Army's reach, Kuklinski has mustered a force of Polish expatriates who flooded across the border in droves in the wake of Gaziz's advance. anti dudists Russians, and Kazakh refugees who have fled the Purification Army's brutal regime. The autonomous Soviet Liberation Army will stop at nothing to put down the maddened Kazakhs and restore a free, equitable state as, in, as long as a Kuklinski, or Kuklinski and his soldiers draw breath, the spirit of Poland will never die. And here we have with a unique flag led by Ryzad. If you'd like to read about him, please go right ahead. And which of the natural spirits not yet lost? Looking pretty darn nice. Assaulted Earth and I guess black market trading, but from ashes. Ryzad Kuklinski worked his jaw. The Kazakh tongue was hard for him to speak, even having learned it a decade earlier, and to do his speech was particularly difficult, yet difficulty was an odd word when discussing the times that had fallen upon the former lands of Russia. If you couldn't put up with some difficulty after all, you hadn't survived the mad regent's reign. Comrades, he began, having said the entire speech twice before in Russian and Polish, which helped him feel in his head for the right Kazakh words to use, though he doubted his grasp of the tongue was about to win any ovations from the, those listening over the radio. It is with great pleasure that I can say the last bastion of the mad region's butchers in these lands have been brought to justice by your revolutionary brethren and the autonomous Soviet Liberation Army. Kuklinski paused for a few moments. The cheers would need to die down before he delivered the full message. Then many peoples of this land have struggled for decades against fascist tyranny, and that struggle is something we shall do endeavor to continue to the utmost. Yet I am here not to talk of that struggle just at the moment. I am here to tell you that there is much work to be done before the moment will arrive. The day when the red banner of socialism shall fly from Lisbon to Vladivostok awaits us yet. But first, comrades, we must rebuild our homes. We must bury those lost and we must create a future for our children. The speech continued long after that, of course, but those few sentences were what stuck in the minds of the Kazakhs who listened in. Though the Poles' grasp of the language was nominal, something about what he said struck a light of hope in their thoughts. For the first time in years, men and women went to sleep not afraid of the dark night outside helped. The beginning of something new, or a half-life of something already dead. Oh boy. And look at that stability. Wow. Oh, Havel's murdered. Goodbye, Havel. And... Ah, oh, it's taking a while, isn't it? Ah, this war of ours. Ivan supposed he was surprised it had taken a week for the first armed standoff to break out. Refugees had poured into the rebuilt town of Zal... Zanakala, burnt to the ground by the region's men, both the Asla in control. Now people felt it safe to return to the urban zone. Safe enough now that a town once barely holding 5,000 people hosted nearly 12,000 refugees amidst the ruins and the new surrounding tent city. Some were Poles who'd fled from the first fascists and then been some of the mad region's last targets. Many Russians fled from the same but hated by Pole and Kazakh alike for being perceived as getting off lightly. The Kazakhs were smaller in number so far north in the Asla to begin with, but the mad region's efforts had reduced that number even further. The standoff was between representatives of all three. A grizzled Kazakh soldier who Ivan knew led a militia, a one-armed Pole clutching his party membership, and a Russian woman garbed like a nurse with an ancient rifle slung on her shoulder. Ivan didn't need to take more than a glance to know things would end in bloodshed if he didn't intervene. It apparently began with the Kazakh and the Pole arguing over whose land the town had built and been built on to begin with. And when the Russian had tried to say it didn't matter, the response from the other two had blamed the actions of Tabby on Russian imperialism as a whole. Ivan supposed he should have been surprised by those thoughts, but he'd heard similar enough ones too often in, from gaunt, sunken, eyed refugees. He supposed he couldn't blame them for tying the actions of a tyrant to his people. In the end, though, he was able to disperse the three before anyone was struck, promising to find some more homes for the injured and elderly amongst those, and the tents managed to get their mind of the more petty conflict they had been entangled in. For Ivan, it was merely another day in life. He knew something else would happen tomorrow, but that was to come. Peace had been maintained for now. Is peace not a worthy goal in its own right? I can see if someone really wanted to get really cool with this and just like really awesome. Like you have like the Poles, the Kazakhs, and the Russians all within this little ton of Soviet Liberation Army, each vying for control and have like a little modifier like in the decisions tab to see like who has more control and who's leading each group. 
I think it'd be kind of cool to like for a power play within this nation if there's ever going to be more you know content for this nation which there might be there might not be but black clouds bullets and mortar shells whiz through the air as the vanguard of the purification committee's troops finally caught up with the tail end of the refugee column Ayim wasn't so unlucky as to be amongst those poor souls, but she nonetheless clutched her children, even tighter towards their bodies the wagons they were entrundled on as fast as the panicked driver could whip the mule. Oh, the poor mule. Inwardly, she cursed the purification men for the thousandth time. The father of her two ch girls wasn't even Russian. He'd been at and Udmurt by ancestry, not that it had mattered to the men who shot him. A thunderous explosion heralded a handful of converted trucks clattering over the nape of the hill that allowed the column to escape the initial attack. And to Ayim's horror, there were machine guns mounted above the cabins of each. In her hurry to push her daughters behind the small crate that contained her belongings, Ayim missed the first cries of relief from ahead. But as the sound of the machine guns stopped, she finally looked out of the wagon to see a sight Allah himself couldn't have made any more welcome. On either side of the carts ahead of her were advancing figures with red and white patches on their arms, soldiers but not shooting at her. Horsemen yelled, battle cries as they careened into the front ranks of the purification men, giving enough time for a pair of ancient tankettes to open up with their cannons on the armed trucks. The fight that continued behind her wagon. As it entered the territory, the autonomous Soviet Liberation Army was fierce, but Ayim could only offer a quick prayer to Allah and thanks, for he had sent the righteous to save the meek, and her daughters would live another day. Sometimes what is right and what is necessary are the same thing, and it looks like poverty is getting pretty bad here in her army, or nation. Hello, McGovern. Elected president. Well, good job. Industrial equipment, not bad. Industrial expertise. But freedom's price. The small knot of men and women standing in the foyer of Kuklinski's residence glanced around in surprise at the relatively spots in nature of the domicile. It was bigger than the most than the rebuilt homes most lived in, of course, but much of the space was dedicated to functionality and governmental duties rather than personal effects. It gave some hope. It gave them some hope for what was to come shortly. Comrade Kuklinski, it was Delkin who spoke first, his mustache twitching with nervousness. As he chose his words carefully, my colleagues and I come to you today to ask that at the next elections, whether there may be a greater number of parties on the ballot than at present. A short chorus of affirmations from those gathered behind him followed. Given the victories of the Asla over the last of the region's nearby forces, after all, there is no reason for continued restrictions on political expression. The next words Delkin might have been... Uh, about to vo give voice to died in his mouth as Kuklinski simply raised a hand to indicate silence. I'm afraid that that would be impossible, Comrade Delkin. The dangers have not yet been passed, and we're surrounded by those who might seek to undermine the revolution again. Was there anything else? Half a dozen voices rose to object. Delkin's not among not one among them. For a few moments, Kuklinski evidently evidently considered trying to answer them before sighing and ordering his guards to dismiss him from the room. There was much work to be done after all, and the revolution did not wait for reactionary objections. Freedom from tyranny must be protected by not allowing tyranny to rise once more. <clears throat> we have actually quite a bit of libertarian social support, but quite a bit of authoritarian social support under a certain Mikhail Tukhachevsky, even though I think for this campaign, like when we got to, to get to this point, we would play a savvy, so if you want to check out that video, Link is in the description below. First link. Um, but I'm pretty sure Zukov won and purged Tukhachevsky, but whatever. Red and white. If someone had told Philip that one day he'd be the leading official of a small village of refugees answering to socialists, the one-armed priest would have probably said something quite unflattering about their parentage. Then again, he supposed the soldiers weren't exactly thrilled to have been forced to give him the job either, except that there really was nobody else with any leadership experience amongst the people of Novi Hel. Well, the priest reflected, as he gazed off to the side where the other half of the village's administration sat on a tattered but still functional prayer mat, not quite the only one. You do realize there will be problems if we build either the church or the mosque separately. Imam Renat grumbled. The man was even older than Philip and had escaped three prison camps in his lifetime, which has not helped his demeanor. But his scarred face belied a genuine talent for both numbers and farming. There will be complaints if it is not built at all as well, Philip offered as a rejoinder. Renat simply stared at the mixed band of men and women setting up tents by the riverside before shaking his head. We need a mill and a place to pray. We don't have enough bricks for three and we can't use mud for a mill. Separate rooms will have to do. The Imam promptly started coughing. Once perhaps Philip might have departed at that, or despaired at that blunt statement of facts. But as he looked at the mix of Poles, Kazakhs, and a dozen other people from whom the flock before him had once belonged to, working together in the harsh sun, Philip felt it wasn't so insurmountable a goal. I think we can manage that, he said to his friend as he got up from the seat. The day was young yet, after all, and there was work to be done. Not everything need to be fought over. But that is the end of the events for Razard Kuklinski, who's leading the autonomous Soviet Liberation Army. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll catch you all tomorrow in another video. Thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your day.